Recently, I did a video on the visual effects revolution Jurassic Park brought to film after its release back in 1993 and discussed the original plans made for the film to incorporate stop motion in bringing the dinosaurs to life on the big screen. Now while we all eventually got to see Jurassic Park in all its groundbreaking glory from CGI to practical animatronics and especially sound design, we never got to see what effect the original go motion techniques would have had on modern cinema if Spielberg were to go this route instead of what was ultimately chosen for the film. Now after making that video, I received a video response and new question about about the film series from Jack and his channel Terradome 3000. I'll go ahead and play the clip from his video now before giving my response. Now I'm going to turn the tables on you Clayton and ask you a question. What do you think would have happened had Jurassic Park been released closer to its novel form? Now what I mean by that is had it been released an R-rated movie where you see like Dennis Nedry's intestines being pulled out and Dr. Wu being sliced open alive and all that sort of stuff. What effect would it have had on the box office numbers and cinema in general? Because we know Spielberg can do some dark shit. Now first off, I want to say thanks for the shout out and question, Jack. I really appreciate it. I'm a big fan of your work. The stuff you worked on with Jurassic World is incredible, and we talk about Dr. Wu's accident left on Sorna, the logs in Mezrani Global's website, and the events depicted in Jurassic World's backstory via your computer work a lot here. And I have you to thank for all of that. Now, thinking of a world with a wholly different Jurassic Park is something hard for me to imagine. Several people have asked me what my opinions are on the possibility of Jurassic Park being remade more faithfully to its novel adaptation, and I'll get to that shortly, but to answer the initial question, if Spielberg were to adapt Crichton's original novel as a straight-up R-rated horror film with an abundance of gore, violence, and even a good dosage of harsh swearing that was featured in the book, I don't think the film would have had quite as wide of an audience as it does today. Now that being said, I still think Jurassic Park would have been a very successful film and it more than likely still would have won its Oscars and other awards for all of its technical accomplishments. However, I feel that if Crichton's book was adapted with nothing held back in every single piece of the story told in all of its gory glory, that the film would have probably grossed around 500 million uh, similar to Terminator 2 back in 1991 against what it ended up making which is over 900 million currently over a billion and uh, it would have become a very well respected and recognizable movie but I don't honestly think it would have been ingrained in people's minds quite as much as it is now and the reason I say that is the bulk of Jurassic Park fans seems to really be the people that were kids when that first film came out back in the 90s. Uh, apart from new kids that are, you know, getting into it through Jurassic World, of course. Uh, if it was created with an all-adult audience in place of everyone else, I don't really think a lot of parents would have been as keen to show it to their children, and as such it probably would have been more of a hit like T2 or, uh, or even Aliens instead of becoming the highest grossing film of all time. Now I still think its impact on cinema would be undeniably important and possibly greater if Spielberg were to employ Stan Winston to do the makeup effects in the film for all of the gory death scenes. Uh, now Stan Winston's career in makeup design and nightmarish special effects was already demonstrated really well in the first couple of Terminator movies, and especially Danny DeVito's Penguin in Batman Returns. If they wanted to show things like Ed Regis' severed leg dripping with blood, or Dennis Nedry holding his own intestines while his head is being picked up off of the ground by the Dilophosaur with its dark imagery showing the dinosaur's teeth going into Nedry's skull and things of that nature, under the direction of Steven Spielberg, uh, who seriously would have directed it quite brutally harsh and maybe even a bit darker than something we saw in Temple of Doom or even more violent than his work on Saving Private Ryan, if he were to direct the film as a straight-up horror movie then it would have probably been his darkest work. Uh, for those that haven't read the original Jurassic Park, to put it lightly, the book is very graphic in its depiction of animal attacks and has a lot of brutal violence. Crichton's first book really uses a lot of descriptive dialogue to make sure the reader understands the graveness of the injuries people obtain in Jurassic Park. And what's even more disturbing for me personally was that every time we come across the deceased body of someone who had previously been killed, the book details the foul stench their bodies leave and makes sure to let you know that there are really large amounts of flies, scavengers present, bloating flesh from the harsh sun, and other nasty things that you definitely wouldn't see in the film we eventually got. Like I said, if Spielberg directed the film like that, 
I think we could kiss the franchise goodbye in terms of seeing multiple sequels and having as large of an audience as it does today, but I do think it would have been a gigantically popular movie with the older crowd. Now Jurassic Park already had some very dark scenes in the film with severed limbs, bodies being shaken like rag dolls, and faces being mauled behind bushes, but I think it's important to recognize Spielberg's ability to deliver really violent scenes uh, in his films. In The Lost World, which is by far the most violent of the Jurassic films, we're shown Eddie Carr being lifted out of his car by one Tyrannosaur before being thrown into the air and caught by both the male and the female before they rip him in half. Now that scene is actually more brutal than most people seem to remember, and even if you go back and watch the scene again, it's important to note the detail in seeing the man not only getting ripped apart, but also after the fact. It's really visible to see the Rex on the right of the screen take a second chomp, which tosses what's left of his upper torso into the jaws of the dinosaur, but also has the mouth clamped down on Eddie's arm, and actually give the impression that it's just severed his hand clean off with the final bite. Even beyond mentioning that, the Rex grabbed Eddie not, not necessarily by the torso, but more like the upper clavicle and other arm. It really is a super graphic depiction of violence shown on screen with only the rain and dark ambiance of the night to obscure its full glory, and I think if the first film were adapted with an R rating in mind, we would have seen a lot more of that. Uh, plus disturbing imagery similar to the faces melting from Raiders of the Lost Ark and bloody hillsides of War of the Worlds, stuff like that. It would still have been a fantastic movie but I generally think it wouldn't have the fan base it does today without a large number of kids like myself who saw that initial movie and said they wanted to grow up and become a paleontologist. Those people would be virtually non-existent unless their parents were cool enough to let them see it at a, at a really young age. Now, with that being said, some people want to know if it would be a good idea or even a possibility to remake the first Jurassic Park and give it an R-rated treatment with nothing held back. The film rights for Jurassic Park, I believe, revert back to the Crichton estate after the sixth movie, but before I go any further, I want to talk about the relationship between Crichton and Spielberg and how unlikely I think it would ever be to see someone else come in and direct a straight-up reboot of the series with nothing in common with its older film siblings other than the name. No one else was ever really supposed to make Jurassic Park except for Spielberg. Now James Cameron and Joe Dante and Tim Burton were all names thrown around to make the movie in a bidding war after the book was published, but it was always kind of a part of the plan, so to speak, to have Steven Spielberg come in and do the story justice. Crichton even adapted his own novel to the screen for Spielberg to direct. Now, I find it highly unlikely that after the sixth Jurassic Park movie that the Crichton estate would show a level of disdain for Spielberg similar to how the, the Tolkien estate feels about Peter Jackson's work in The Lord of the Rings. And I honestly think they would probably resell the, the rights to Steven himself, possibly without Universal and maybe directly to Amblin. And I say this knowing how much Crichton actually was a part of the filmmaking process of those first three movies. Now he wrote Jurassic Park's screenplay himself before David Kep did his revisions and was present on the set for not only the first movie but also a lot of the filming for The Lost World. And they even brought him back to help brainstorm for Jurassic Park 3. I really don't think that they wouldn't give the rights back to Spielberg after they expire when the sequel to Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is released. Even if it did get picked up by someone else, I guarantee you that it would never get remade into an R-rated film simply because it could make more money as something designed to be PG-13. Now Jurassic Park has already proven it has the potential to be a box office titan. I mean it was the highest grossing film of all time for God's sake, and they would never try to not go all in and make as much money as possible from the property. If they remade Jaws today, and did it rated R and made it very graphic and filled with dark twisted imagery, it wouldn't become the highest grossing film of all time like it did back in 1975. It's just a bad business decision to do something like that. We're currently getting Terminator films with a PG-13 rating and some people think Jurassic Park will get written as a hard R? No way. Now, if someone wanted to redo it as a Netflix series and just make a small profit from that kind of streaming revenue, another problem would come from bitching from fans about its stark differences from the original films. You really can't please everyone at once and I think it just wouldn't work. The most plausible way I see that we could possibly see an incredibly dark and violent Jurassic Park would be to actually do spin-off series set between films and created for Netflix or some other service. That way audience complaints would be at a minimal due to it being a a side story instead of a feature film, and the reality of the brutal attacks could be depicted without as many restraints. The only downside I would see to this would be the special effects taking a hit in the series rather than a film, and 
That's a big no-no for anyone that knows Jurassic Park's extremely respectable legacy and believability of its dinosaurs. Oddly enough, I feel like a really good alternative to doing the effects for a show like that would be the inclusion of what Jack talked about in his video on the stop-motion effects being almost utilized for the first film. The video he showed on Pterodome 3000 depicted the go-motion T-Rex with slight modifications via simple CGI that actually added in motion blur, muscle jiggle, and what looks like a more convincing frame rate to make the animal look far better than it did in the original test footage the movie had. It really looks quite good, and I'd recommend checking it out if you haven't already. That being said, I'd love to see a story set between Jurassic Park and the Lost World around 94 or 95 with these kind of ideas in place, and I think the fans would love it. Bottom line, I really think that Jurassic Park would have taken a hit in its overall box office earnings had it been as violent as it was written by Crichton, and I also think it may have had the chance to become even more revolutionary than it already is. Seeing a film done in 1993 with not only realistic dinosaurs, but also realistic blood, guts and over-the-top violence and a good dose of visible injuries shown through Stan Winston's makeup effects probably would have garnered even more praise than it's honestly gotten. And that's really saying something. Now I want to thank Jack for asking that question as it's always a pleasure to talk Jurassic Park with someone that's as much of a fan as I am about this sort of thing and I think it would really be in your best interest if you gave his channel a visit and subscribed. He's actually worked a lot on the actual franchise through websites like Mizrani Global and Jurassic World's tie-in site, and the work he's done on those mediums, whether it be the Hoskins taking out the Pteranodons from Jurassic Park 3 or the you-know-what being an accident left on Sorna, uh, yeah, and all of that amazing stuff, I really think you can't go wrong with watching his material. I certainly have a lot of my success that I've seen on this channel attributed to his contributions to the Jurassic Park franchise, and like I said, it's well worth checking out. If you like me, you'll probably like him. Now, I want to thank each and every one of you for watching this video and hope you enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I've deserved it, I would appreciate the like and hope you consider subscribing if you haven't already so that you can see me again. Out of curiosity, because I do read the comments and you guys should know that by now, but what do you think would have happened if Jurassic Park was given a hard R treatment by Spielberg when they were making the first movie? Do you think it would have still been as revolutionary and how popular do you think the movie would have become? Uh, thanks for sticking around, guys, and as always, take it easy.